Live from the Oracle Conference Center in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's theCUBE, covering the Oracle Cloud Launch, brought to you by Oracle. Now your host, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at Redwood Shores for Oracle, at Oracle's headquarters for the kind of post-event analysis of the Oracle Cloud Platform Launch. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Valley. I'm my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of wikibon.com, and our next guest is Penny Everill, VP of Product Management, Oracle. Thanks for joining us on theCUBE. Thank you. Uh, quick, quick summary, I want to get your take. What do you, you think about the announcement? I mean, you know, pretty packed house, it was very crowded. Yes. Larry delivered excellent speech. What's uh -huh. your thoughts? Yeah, a lot of excitement. As Larry said, our biggest announcement, I think, today, in terms of certainly the platform services for the cloud, and I think you saw the reaction here in response. Yeah, he said it's all complete. Uh, a lot of elements in there, the Exadata as a service, the database, the database has been key. What, what's the database as a service market represent right now? How do you see that fitting in? You got a lot of NoSQL in there, a lot of data, data management piece. What's your thoughts on that? Sure, and you heard um, today a lot of talk about data management, not necessarily just database as a service. And that's key for us. I mean, we think data is um, critical to all of these platform services, it's critical to the software as a service applications. And when we talk about data, it's not just relational data. Sometimes people look at the Oracle database and think that's just for relational. Um, in fact, the Oracle database over the years has been able to hold much more than relational data, textual data, graph data, spatial, uh, more recently XML and JSON. So it's much more than just relational data, it's a complete data management platform. In addition to that, and you heard about the big data cloud service, so though we can hold a lot of data inside the Oracle database, sometimes it may make more sense to hold certain other data types outside, such as on Hadoop. So we're really offering a complete data management platform um, whether it's most appropriate to use the mainstream Oracle database or extend out to Hadoop. So people were tweeting, Larry, you complete me. <laughs> uh, you used the word complete several times. Uh -huh. what, what does that mean to customers, <laughs> having a complete set of cloud services? Um, I think um, it might mean different things to different people. There is um, both the depth of our offerings from, as he mentioned, the free tiers from software as a service, platform and infrastructure, and we have all the, those complete tiers now, as Larry mentioned, probably the main missing factor was compute, but we announced um, compute today. Um, but it's also, obviously, as well as the depth, the breadth of our offerings. So we have a large portfolio, platform as a service offerings. You know, most dear to my heart is the data management services. So both um, the traditional database and an offering that is appropriate from startups through mission critical enterprise deployments, as well as new data type applications, such as those using Hadoop and NoSQL. So talk a little bit about automation. That came up in the discussion today. Um, Larry made the statement that we have far more automation than our competitors. What's yeah, your take on and, automation? You know, automation is something that we've been speaking to our enterprise customers about for a long time. Um, management of the database is probably the single biggest TCO, um, part of the TCO cost of the Oracle database. Um, two key parts um, to managing that cost as far as the database is concerned. One is the initial provisioning of the database. And um, I think you heard Larry or Thomas talk about the difference in terms of the amount of steps and time it takes to provision a database application using Oracle Cloud, which is just a few clicks as I demonstrated versus some of the um, competition. So the first aspect is the very highly um, automated provisioning. In addition, and what is unique to Oracle is that we have automated tooling on top of the database. So automated backups, automated patching, automated standby database creation. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you announced Exadata essentially as a service. We did. Uh, today, maybe talk about that and the importance a little bit. Yeah, sure, Exadata has um, been incredibly popular for our on-prem customers. Um, when it first came out, the main applications on Exadata, I would say were data warehouse applications, but really then it grew um, to run in OOTP applications, third party off the shelf applications, and increasingly in recent years, as an efficient database consolidation platform. Um, and what we're offering now is all of those use cases for Exadata on the Oracle Cloud, where we manage the Exadata infrastructure. You don't have to worry about 
your data center and the footprint in your data center and calling and managing that infrastructure. We manage it and offer you those um, high performance mission critical capabilities for any database workload. So Gartner uses this term bimodal <laughs> IT. IDC talks about platform two and platform three. Some people say old, new. Is your strategy to make the old and the new sort of uh, seamless or as robust, as agile? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that's interesting. As you mentioned, we've seen those Gartner reports on bimodal uh, where they look at kind of the old guard being the reliable gut part of IT and the new part of IT being, you know, the agile, looking for new business opportunities should they run those on the cloud. I would say we see opportunities in both. You know, I speak to a lot of our enterprise customers, ask them about their plans for the cloud. And some of them are kind of, you know, the traditional IT infrastructures that want to take advantage of the cloud, possibly to get more um, capacity at certain times, um, or to have capacity for things like development and tests, where they're not really sure how much they need or how long they're going to need it. And in addition, certain of our other customers are looking for new types of applications. And for those, from a database development point of view, we're looking at what we need to do to help those new applications, whether it's managing new data types, providing new APIs. So I think we're addressing both of them and we will do see opportunities in both and ultimately some merging, obviously, interoperability across both areas. What's the most exciting thing about today for you? This announcement, what's the one thing that pops out that gets your attention that you're most excited about? Well, that's an easy <laughs> answer when you ask a database product manager as I am. So clearly yeah. for me, it was the Exadata service, um, unique. I think this is the first time that anyone has been able to run a true active active cluster database in the cloud, fully managed by the cloud service provider. We had a comment on the crowd chat, someone said, they're bringing the Exadata monster out to everyone. I mean, this is a big deal. I mean, share with the folks out there what, what the Exadata service means. I mean, because I mean, you have a lot of happy customers with Exadata, but you don't have the whole market. It's a big product. Right. What does this mean for the rest of the market? Um, yeah, that's an interesting point. It does mean that we can probably extend um, the um, reach of Exadata to more customers. So now Exadata is available on a subscription basis. It is available starting in a relatively um, modest um, um, unit size. As I mentioned, you know, we start at just 28 OCPUs and can dynamically grow from there. So I think the first thing is we're extending the reach out yeah. to more customers, as well as obviously offering some of our existing enterprise customers that are looking to get to more of a cloud model, the ability to stay on the Exadata system, continue growing. Yeah. We had a big time influencer come on the uh, this live stream on the crowd chat as well, and he had said, as a former storage guy, I think the NFS v4 locally and via the cloud to access object store is a big one, and that beating AWS Glacier on price at one-tenth of the price are two significant storage announcements. Comments? Um, standing ovation, you know, you know <laughs> a bow, you know, a curtsy. I mean, what do you what do you say to that? I mean, it's a pretty big compliment. Yeah, it is. Um, I've got to say that, you know, I'm not necessarily a, a storage person. I was shocked myself at that price cut. I mean, it is not often said about Oracle that we're a tenth of the cost of a retail company, but there you go. So yeah, you know, certainly, you know, in a different angle, that was uh, yeah. also a highlight. And we'll also look at the numbers because all the analysts are out there writing down, EMC costs $6 million and then Oracle is 240,000. The well, analysts will, will unpack those numbers. <laughs> Um, Penny, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. We are, we're out of time here. We're down to the last hour here, last minutes of the, uh, of the hour for the event here. Thanks so much for taking the oh, time. Oh, pleasure. Thank appreciate you, John. It. Thank you, this Dave. This is theCUBE uh, here live in Silicon Valley in Redwood Shores at the Oracle headquarters. This is theCUBE's coverage, special coverage of the Oracle Cloud Platform Announcement. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching. <laughs>